Our sponsors this week is the Heritage Chippy, best salt and pepper box in Liverpool. Three Chinese meals for £15 every Wednesday. Every Monday, all burger meals at our place. Give them a follow. Thanks. Hello everybody, welcome to Billy Wogan's podcast and we're back again with <laughs> none other than uh, Darren well, Schmidt, our favourite, our favourite drum and our favourite. Billy, I haven't worked the door since about 2002, <laughs> lads, fucking hell mate, I get fucking leaded. What do you want to talk? In fact, I'm fucking sick of looking at you, lads. Like, okay, now back with yours. Jaws 3, we're on now. Look, we started on Jaws 1. Everyone thought that was sound. Yeah. It's like Spielberg, isn't it? You're like yeah. a young Spielberg, lad. Started on Jaws 2. Everyone watches Jaws 2. They go, fucking sound. Lad. This is Jaws 3. Now we're on Billy. It never went down well. You remember Jaws 3? Yeah. You clocked it was a fucking robot, didn't you? You went... Fucking shit, this George Street. George Street. Near ended fucking Spielberg, lad. You've got me on again. <laughs> Can't help. Bill, you could have left it a few more weeks. You know why? Why? Some cunts offered to do the Gretels, haven't he? Do me Gretels for fuck all if I put them on social media. Lad, look at the fucking Gretels on me, lad. The bo- the top ones are all right. The bottom ones are like half fucking dogs, mate. And I can't even get a shave, lad. There's no barbers open. Fuck all. <laughs> I haven't had my hair cut since Crimbo. What did you make call me the day when you made see me or what? Fucking caveman, man. Really. A fucking caveman, lad, and I'm sat here doing podcasts. Fucking gob like a fucking hard leather end bag that's been in <laughs> Turkey on the marmorous front, lad, for a fucking month, lad, without fucking uh, getting a bit of shelter. Fucking gob on me like a leather handbag, lad, and you've got me on this thing, lad. <laughs> what do you want to fucking hell? Listen, it's just an Easter special, lad, so it'll be Easter special. Here. I'll get nailed like Jesus on the cross then, <laughs> won't I? They'll be going, this cunt again, mate, on this podcast. Who is he? You know what I mean? Fucking well, hell, what are we talking about, lads? You know, hey, so, <laughs> so we know what we're talking about, lad, because we've been shitting down and we've took a few notes there. So tell us a little bit about, say, uh, when you're on holiday over in Spain again. Let's uh, let's get them oh, stories Spain out. Spain fucking, well, I do like holidays, Bill. That's the yeah. only thing I like, you know what I mean? I, I'm not, you know myself, Billy, I'm not into cars. I'm not into watches. I'm not into, like, flash clobber and all that. Do you know what I mean? But I like going on holidays. I'll try and do a few holidays a year. Yeah. And um, I've went on holidays sometimes. Like, this year I had the most comfortable holiday I ever went on. You know why? I went in, um, the COVID was lifted for a bit, weren't it? And I went in, um, fucking, when was it? September. And I went to Turkey. And I went as a fat cunt, lad, right? With the lockdown. I had been scranning properly. I'd be doing bits of training. And that was the most comfortable holiday I'd ever had. You know why? Because other times when I've been on holiday, and I've been in Bosnia. Everyone thinks they want to get the glippos in, don't they, when they go on holiday? All abs out and all that. You know when you look like that on holiday, all people say to you is he's on the gear. Look at that cunt. Right? It's these fellas who message me go, all right, Dan, I've got 10 weeks before I go on holiday, lad, in. Do as a diet. That's what you want to get the glippos in, fucking walking around. Do you know if I'm on a, on a holiday, right? Anyone will ever tell you if they've been on holiday with me, the lads and that. If I'm getting the glippos in, lad, I'm throwing me top on. Fuck all that gear walking round. Like, I can't do it, Billy. That's not me. I never got into training to get the fucking the ailing with no top on. It's, I, it makes me cringe, lad. And so when a big fat cunt went with me kids in a bed and we had a boss time because I had no one wanting to arm wrestle me, no one wanting to talk about steroids or no one going, look at that fucking cunt and fight me, I had a boss time. So I'd rather go, but I've had some fucking funny holidays like here. Yeah, Here's one for you, Bill, fucking. <laughs> we goes to Egypt, and it went fucking, it was a quite decent hotel. I know they all say they're decent, but this one was quite a decent yeah. hotel. And you're fucking me bad, lad. She likes to make mates. Yeah. You know, some of your birds, you know that, boys. They like to fucking start going to the bar, and I'm just talking to this one here from fucking um, London and all that. She's got kids, our kids' age anyway. I like to just be a lazy cunt on holiday, lad. I like to just fucking get there. Right, I'll play with the kids in the pool, but they're, they're all flying, they've got little mates, I just leave them, and I'll just lie there, I might get a good book, and I'll get a nice bronzy, and as I say, if I've got to get a Gallipo in, lad, the top's coming on, I'm not walking around like Chesney McLean, fuck all that gear, it's not me, lads, you know what I mean? So that's me on holiday, right? But me bird, lad, she likes talking to people, other women and all that. I've just met Barbara there from here, fucking, you know, fucking heightness somewhere and all that. I'm just sitting there, so anyway... 
this fella comes over to me. I'm lying on the line, oh lad. I was in good shape, you know what I mean? He goes, he comes over and he goes, fella from Essex, it was Phil, and I'm lying there. And he goes, all right, Darren, you all right? And I thought, who's this cunt here? And I looks up and here's a fella, straight away, he's got all the bling on, big fucking rolly on Billy's fucking, you go boss flip flops. So I tell you what, you ain't mine, they were like, like, like my ones, my ones were Jags out of man, he is with the real McLaren, right? I looks at him, you go boss fucking shorts. And I went, yeah, all right, lads, how the fuck does this cunt know my name? <laughs> so he goes, you Mrs. Third Darren? He's like, light spoken, right? You Mrs. Third Darren, she's just over the bar. She's um, having a drink with my um, wife. She was just saying there, you own a gym. I went, lad, look, mate, I don't know what she's fucking telling your wife there, lad, but we own a gym, yeah, but it's like a scrap yard, lad, because I'm not one of them. No blagging on holiday or blagging yeah. in real life. I'm this big successful fella and all that. I'm fucking not. I've got no ass in me kecks, Billy. And I love bodybuilding and competing. I still do. And it'll never bring you any money. And you do everything for the love of it, right? So I'm lying there and he goes, I believe you've got a gym in Liverpool, haven't you? I said, let me stop you there, lad. It's like a fucking scrapyard. I said, it's in a big warehouse. Don't think it's like Total Fitness. And all me mates come in and we just say, have a scream. So he goes, yeah, yeah. But you know a lot of people, don't you? I thought, oh, lad, fuck off with this show, mate. You know what I mean? I'm a bit of a knack on holiday, Bill. Then you leave too hard a town. I went, no, lad, I don't know anyone, mate. He went, oh, shame that, Darren, because there's a bit of a debt there. I went, oh, what? He said, there's some money there collecting debts. And I went, look, lad, don't look at me, right, and think because I'm fucking sitting here like fucking Charles Atlas that, you know, that I can collect debts. Because I can't, Bill, I don't know nothing about collecting debts, right? I haven't done the debt collecting scene. I've got a couple of mates who have, but I've never done it. So I said, oh, I'm not fucking interested, lad. So he goes, shame, Darren, there was a lot of money in it, and you could have found yourself on a right nice drink. So I said, all right, lad, sound, just leg them, Bill. So anyway, in the night, he goes to the bar, don't you fucking all on holiday. <laughs> fucking everyone goes to the same bar, and I'm sitting there. I've had a few whiskeys, because that's me tipple, Bill. And um, he come right over. Still, I had a car bomb with him because I can't be arse mixing, especially with not me own. He comes over and he goes, all right, Darren. I went, all right, lad. So he goes, um, nice watch you've got on there. Rolex Oyster. <laughs> you know, like that bill right away. I went, jag this, lad. And it fucking was. I'm not going to fucking lie to anyone. I was. I bought it out of Egypt for the score. I went, jag this, lad. I got it from the fucking market, lad. Oh, oh. He went, I bet you like your cars, don't you? <laughs> I went, what? He went, I bet you like your cars, cause see you flying around a big Jeep, Darren. I said, no, lad. I said, listen, I've got a mobility car, lad. Turn it in. I said, no, mate. <laughs> so he's standing, he's struggling now, Bill, you know what I mean? But I thought, the whiskeys are going down a little bit further. And he went, um, that's up, you go on. Thank you, go, boss. He's a right fucking bell end, Bill. <laughs> and it wasn't this time. It went a jar, and I just, oh. And you fucking helmet, you know, just throwing all these things at me. But the whiskeys are going down further. And he went, yeah, just wanted to maybe um, bend your ear about this debt a little bit. So lad, I was a little bit looser. Then I went, well, what's it about, lad? So he goes, well, where is Darren? I run a car lot. He said, down in Essex. I said, OK, lad. Yeah. And he goes, um, my uncle, he said he lent some money to a neighbour. I said, yeah. And he goes, um, the neighbour... He never ever paid him back. And what happened, Darren? My uncle died. He said, and the fellas never ever paid the family back. We've got no proof, but he owns a car lot as well. He said, and we both import cars, you know, from abroad. He goes, Porsches, Maseratis. Oh, can I Bill? I didn't have a clue. Last car I had bought myself was an Orion, lad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just sitting there. It's going right over me head. He went, you know, Darren, he owes him over 100 grand. Well, he owes the, us the family. He said, we really like to get it back. So I said, hey, lad, I said, you're from London. There's a few fucking tasty firms down in London. I said, why haven't you fucking asked them to get the money back? Exactly, yeah. So he goes, um, well, Darren, he said, um, you know, I've been to them and, that, you know, they'll want them a lot of money up front, he said, before they get the debt in. I said, oh, all right, lad. I said, so I'd had a few whiskeys, Bill, and I'd phoned some head case for no one here. <laughs> Where's the mistake I ever fucking made? <laughs> this fucking fella on the phone, he's done about a 30 in jail. Fucking oh well, about, I'm exaggerating there, about a 20 over the years. He's in his 60s, and I knew in his day he collected a few debts, but he's half round a twist. So it gets on the blow, it's about 10 at night, and I went, hello, lad. I said, yeah, there might be a debt here, right? 
So he goes, yeah, what's it about? So it tells him what's it about. Next to me, he's going, give me that fucking dress. I'll burn his feet. I'll do this. I thought, oh, lad, this is fucking heavy, this. And I just put down the blower. But I had the mate, I'll just call him Big John. Because you know I don't no, like to throw no names in. I had a mate, I'll just call him Big John. Big John was a belt. Mention right. no names, Mention lad. Mention no names, lad. I'm not a grass, you know what I mean? So Big John, yeah. he was legit, lad. He was a fucking right hard case. You know who he is, Bill. Yeah, Big John. And he collected debts. Fucking hell, mate. He went to the buy and everything, collected them legally. Do you know? I mean, and illegally if you fucking wanted your toe back. But he was a heavy cat, but a lovely fella as well. So I phoned Big John. I said, oh, Lord, Lord. I said, I've got this fucking cockney here. He said, he's got a debt and, you know, he's willing to pay like 20 grand to get it back. So he goes, put him on the blower, lad. So he puts him on the blower. Big John, fucking cool as fuck. You know what I mean? He puts him on the blower. So the cockney explains all the fucking ifs and buts about it. And then puts me back on the blower. So John goes, look, lad, I look into this debt. He said, and um, if there's fuck all in it, there's nothing we can do, but I'll have a look into it. I said, all right. That was forgot about. About two weeks later, I'm in the gym and walks the cockney, lad. <laughs> all right, Darren. Ah, oh, fucking hell, what's he doing here, mate? Didn't want him at the fucking gym, you know what I mean? Come in with another two cockneys. Just stay here to meet your mate, Big John. I said, oh, well, all right. So I fetched on the phone to John. I said, oh, John, what the fuck are you meeting this cockney for here, lad? I don't want him in me fucking gym. Do you know what I mean? He goes, it's all right, lads. We're just going to have a little brief meeting. He said, and, um, he said, tell him what's what. And we'll go from there. So I said, all right. So he comes in. Anyway, big John, right? He can play the blinders, right? So he walks in and the cockney's sitting there. He was only a fucking little fella. He was with Tevers, mate. He brought up for a bit of backup to the <laughs> and Big John, he was an intimidating fucker. He walks in, he was blowing through his nose. He's like, you know, like that. <laughs> and he walks in the cockney, he's sitting there and he went in. Fucking hell, Darren. He said, you're my big John. He's a scary guy. <laughs> and he said, that he's all right, you know, lad. Big John was standing there. All right, lad. He went, look, lad. I've looked into the debt. Legally, there's fuck all you can do about it, right, the debt. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I realise that. I realise that. He goes, but look, what we'll do is, me and Darren, Darren works for me, lad. I just had to pay, pay the big mute. I just thought, fucking hell, I got that job quick, didn't I? So I went, look, you know, confident nod. Yeah, yeah, I collect that to myself. You know, that kid giving it that gear because I didn't know what the fuck was happening. And he went, me and Dan, and we'll come down to London Monday. He said, and um, we'll go and see the fella. We'll put the word to him. And he said, and if he doesn't want to pay the debt, we'll put the dogs on him, lad. And he went, whoa, what would that be? What's the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, the dogs are, lad. Right? He goes, the dogs are, right? We'll have someone, he said, following his bed. We'll have someone following him. We'll find out where his kids go to school. We'll see the ma dropping them off. We'll have word with the ma. That fella will be passing that hundred grand over, he said, winning the end of the month. Lad, you should have seen the cockney. His fucking hands were rubbing like fuck. He was like, fucking hell, that'd be great, that would be. He was a greedy little cunt, Bill. Right? And he was a millionaire, this cunt, right? Greedy little cunt, and he's rubbing his hands. Because me mate, bit, Big John, right? Yeah. He'd done a little bit of fucking background work on him, and he said, see him, that cunt, lad. I've seen him where's Ken, right? Because he was a proper debt collector, he knew the script. He went, I've seen his Ken. He said, I've seen what he's got on the forecourt, lad. That cunt's Brewster. Right? So I'm going to get some dough out of him. So he goes, I'll tell you why you haven't been to a London firm, mate, to get the debt back. Because they'd want that money up front. I won't say what family he'd been, but he'd been to a big London family, right, to get the debt. And they went, no, we want the debt up front, then we'll get you the debt. That's how it works down there, right? So he went, if you want us to get this debt, right, I'll tell you what, give us five grand Monday morning and we're on it. You'll get your month back within a month, within a month. So the cockney's sitting there, he went, wow, fucking hell, he said, um, five grand's a lot of money, a lot of money, John. He went, lad, you fucking got it, lad, I've seen your car, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. He went, all right, I'll see what I can do over the weekend. He said, I'll give you a bell. He said, I'll see what I can do. Oh, he walks out, the fucking cockney is three mates. I said, oh, lad, what the fuck, mate? 
I said, I don't want to get into this, you know what I mean? Fucking all this deck gear and that. He went, why not? He said, just come with me Monday, London. He said, and I'll give you two and a half quid. He said, if you come with me, I went, it's all right. So anyway, it come round, he fell a give in. He said, I'll pay the five grand this Cockney. So it come to like the Sunday night. Big John rings me and he goes, lad, we're going to get that debt Monday morning. So I said, oh, okay, lad. I said, um, can you get someone to mine the gym? And at the time, I couldn't. So Monday's my busiest day with PT. So I said, John, I said, I can't get no one to mine the gym. Fucking hell, me. You know what I mean? He went, it's all right, lad. Go on. I'll fucking, um, I'll go down, lad. I'll get the fucking debt. So I said, all right. So in the night time, it's about eight o'clock at night. Big John comes in. And he throws me to an half Granville. And he went, yeah, lad, there's your cut of that. I said, okay, John. I said, then when we going down? He went, well, fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? I said, you know, when we gonna when are the lads going down to fucking ski? He went, fuck off. I'd never do something like that, lad. I said, well, what about the cockney, lad? I said, um, getting him his fucking dough. He went, ah, oh, fuck off, lad. We're keeping that. I yeah. said, oh, lad, he fucking hell, mate. I said, he knows where the gym is. He went, lad, he's using us for backup. He hasn't got fucking no one. I said, what if he rings you? He went, Fuck off, snap the chip. He went, he's ringing no one. Don't you want this two and a half grand? I said, yeah, go ahead, I'll have it. He went, give us a hundred quid out of that for petrol. And we fucking bumped him, lad. <laughs> Where's Dolly that fella out? You know what I done with my own money? Went back to the same old fucking tell, mate. <laughs> uh, hope that I wouldn't bump into the cunt, mate. Just fellas like that, innit? You know what I mean, Bill? That you fucking meet over the years in gyms and that. But another one. We had this fella come to the gym, right? And he was fucking from Runcorn. This fella, right? And yeah. said, he was real hard ass on him. And he wanted to do this bodybuilding show everyone was getting. He was 50, just saying 50. He wanted to get into this like bodybuilding show thing that every all the young lads were getting ready for and a few older ones. And he'd never done one before in his life. And he had these fuck. He had a good upper body, right? But he had legs like our baby lads, you know what I mean? So everyone's going, lad, Lenny and Chuck will do the show. And the reason why we called him in Chuckle, lad, he looked the ringer at one of the Chuckie brothers. <laughs> he was gone fucking deep space run corner, lad. He had the pirate sloops, two in there, one in there, lad. He had a, a, a muzzy like Ian Rush. And he wanted to do this show. All the fucking, oh, all the fucking world tattoos all over him and that, lad. You know what I mean? <laughs> they always have the scout badge on them, don't they, lad? They're trying the fucking best, mate. Uh, they always have the, the live fucking, yeah, the live a beard on the chest. Liverpool badge on. Never been a match in his fucking life, lad. You know how, you know how hard they're trying, don't you? Yeah. So someone said, oh, lad, let him fucking chuckle do the, do the show, lad. Go on. So it was like a fucking, it was a warm up before the Northwest. They were thinking, what was it called? The Lakes. It was up in the Lake District. A mate of mine runs a show up there. So he said, just throw him in the under 50s. Now in the gym, anyone who didn't know about bodybuilding would have looked at the cunts at 50 odd, the upper body on him and gone, looks fucking great him. And it did his upper body look great. But when you've got legs like a fucking newborn, mm. you're not a bodybuilder, mate. You know what I mean? So um, I went, oh, his fucking legs though, lad. So someone led, fuck him, lad. Let him do them. <laughs> right. He was one of them cunts who had a dead fast metabolism, so he didn't even have to diet the cunt. Yeah. So anyway, we fuck him, lets him do it. And we goes up, Bill, and when we get up there, he's only got fucking t-shirts made, him in his bed and all the kids, right? <laughs> and they're standing there with Ian Shuckle on the front of the t-shirt with no top on like that. We don't do that clip, lad. Anyone from here, lad, you're not getting away with that. His name on his track, he lad. Oh, me, have you forgot who you are, lad? Do you know what I mean? And, and picture a chuckle like that right on the front in his bed that written underneath it, nifty at 50. <laughs> he had one on us. Beard had one on. And his kids had one on. And his grandkids had them all on. He was about 10 of them. <laughs> and I walked in and I went, oh, fucking hell, chuckle, lads. Fucking the top top on you. And then he was going like, he was oblivious to you. He was just made up. Why, Darren, what's wrong? I went, Harley, oh, and fucking hell, did the lad see you in that nippy of 50? <laughs> You're going to get it, you know me, because he was from right loons, you know what I mean? So, anyway, he ends up seeing it and fucking slaughtered him. So it comes to him getting on stage, and I hadn't even learned him how to pose. I thought, fuck you, uncle, he's a lost cause, Bill. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If he wants to do it, let him fucking do it, you know what I mean? Because he weren't that serious. I give him a diary, I'm being following it. You know, I'd done a few other things that I told him to do and he hadn't been doing. So I thought, Chuckle, fuck you, lad. Just crack on. So anyway, day this show comes and Chuckle walks out, lad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, 
<laughs> now the masters in bodybuilding they're mainly fellas who've been doing it all their lives you yeah know? do you know what i mean there's some they don't care whether they're 50 they walk out and they're absolute units mate they've been doing it all their lives right the way to you chuckle walked out lad should have thrown a cosy under his arm because he would have been better going to fucking bat, you know, with a little towel under his arm. And he's just fucking standing there. Well, the lad started on him, didn't he? And we used to call him the pirate because he had one loop in a bald head. He looked like an owl pirate. So it started on him. Everyone's going, who are you? Who are you? Know, like that. Like his kids in bed looking over that next minute. He started going, from me to you. You know, the Chuckle Brothers. Lad. He got slaughtered, but the whole of the audience started laughing at the lads, ripping, and someone went, hey, Darren, is somebody about, hey, Darren, is he from your gym? Like? <laughs> he went, oh, yeah, he went, fucking hell, you're supposed to be supporting him, mate. <laughs> lad, we fucking shredded them. <laughs> In the end, lads, right, he just got ripped that much that the judges started laughing, lads, right? And I said, the lads, fucking stop it. We were crying, laughing. I went, fucking stop it, lads. You know, he's here before, you know, <laughs> to to him, lad. he got led in. in the end, mate. I looked for him afterwards just to say, oh, lad, I'm sorry about it. You know, it's mainly me. I really, I couldn't help it. Sorry about it, lad. He fucked off. I think the last thing he was seen, he was on the fucking mercy on a pirate ship, lad. We never fucking <laughs> seen him again. But I fucking, he was fucking from Runcombe with a lip pill badge on. He deserved it, mate. But you know what, right? You can't be sensitive when you're around you because you're like that on Insta, aren't you? You'll just, you know, what I like about you is you'll tell people how it is and you'll tell them straight and you won't fucking, you won't start like making things up. Lads, don't stuff. do it to thingy anyone, oh, no, to know. fucking hate them, lad. You know what I mean? It's only harmless banter. Give me a back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Fucking hell, lads. Well, you get I'm first to give me my own self stick. Yeah. So, do you know, if you're laughing along, you're getting stick as well. You know how it is, Bill, where, yeah. we, are, where we are, mate. That, that's the thing about it, isn't it? I think that's what it is with Scousers as well. It's kind of like it's in bread and everything. We've got yeah. that humour. I mean, yeah. So, you know, you what was it like? like so, did you say the early days? Like, let's go back to like the doors and that. Like, oh, yeah. there, there's loads of stories on, on uh, of the hard cases back then, weren't they? Do you know what, lads? All I can say on that, I worked with some... The hardest two fellas I ever worked with were 10 stone odd. Yeah. Right? And I'll tell you, and I worked, I worked for like nearly 17 years, Billy, and the hardest two fellas... So all you daft you said with big red faces, I know fellas who were 10 stone, you'd fucking turn your lecky off in a minute. And that was Shane Airy and Gary Ryder. Yeah. Lad, they were like Drago out of Rocky Four. Whoever, did, <laughs> whoever he hit, he did his flies. Remember, <laughs> fucking Rocky Four, Drago hitting a fucking lecky ding. Okay, now, mate. <laughs> they were like them two, the nicest two fellas. Because we were all big units, and them two were only small, people would pick on them, lad. And you know, if you're a boxer, right, respect to boxers, right, the cunts can fight. Right? You know, if you're a big daft, you said, no one's learned you to fight. You're just expecting that if you hit them with a big fucking daft fucking punch that, you know, you're going to knock someone out. I've seen fucking fellas, 20 stone if fellas, and a kid go, what the fuck was that, you big dope? And felt fucking embarrassed, you know what I mean? You know I don't like bodybuilders. I like the old school ones. Yeah. But you know the new school ones? I haven't got fucking time for them. They're a load of fucking blades. That's why me gym's private, lad. I don't even... I want all the our schooling like me, you, a few others... And we have a scream, don't we, lad? Yeah. Right, and that's the way we are. Same with John and Smigger and that up in Four Corners. Same with me, mate, Barry and Paul in the training station. We're all old school, and that's what we like having round of us. But all the new school, I can't be asked. But going back to reputations, mate, I, they were the hardest two fellas I ever worked with. And um, it's a little story of our fucking... I know, people know um, Jimmy Nick. Jimmy is Shay, don't you? I only know him as Jimmy. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, I Shamrock, yeah. the Shamrock Express. I know. And um, I remember being out with Jimmy one night. I don't know whether I've told you this story. I mean, fucking... I think it was a Thursday night. We're cleaning them out. We were on fucking rough bar. It was like Star Wars, the bar in fucking... Um, <laughs> Black Road, you know, Montrose. And we're on there. Me, Jimmy, and a few others. All good lads. And we're on there. And um, it come to the end of the night. And Jimmy was our head dorm. And he was our leader. You know what I mean? The club was a world champion. And you'll remember this, because me and Jimmy got into a few little fucking things with people. And uh, you'll remember this. So, we, we, end of the night, they had a function bar in there, and then the club. So, people, if they wanted a quiet thing, would go in the function room, and there was no music, and you could just chat to birds. Because if you were on the dance floor where all the thing was, it was dead loud. So, if you got a little bit, bit of birds, you could go, yeah, come on the function, have a baby with me there, yeah. and then chat it up in there, Bill. 
So people would always late to get out of the function. So he cleans the club out and he goes in the function room. Here's this half fella in there, Billy, I swear to you, mate. Do you know, you can look at some people and you can go, he's had a right few fights in this fucking day, that cunt. Look at the gob on him. Fucking gob like a sharp eh, this cunt. Like, he's standing there like that. Right. <laughs> so Jimmy goes up to me, goes, all right, last. I said, um, finish that pint, kid. And I swear to you, Bill, we were all, well, I was about 19, I reckon. don't know how old Jimmy was, but say Jimmy was 26, 27. So we was all like, Big strong young lads, you know, fucking we were all there, you know what I mean? And this fella I reckon he was in his late fifties and he said, you know, he said, Can you stop fucking pint there, lad? And after going out, kid, and he's just like that with the pint. He was always one fucker. You know, just dead cool. Like cool and Luke left with the pint. So I goes over to him, I'm a fucking big unit by them, and I said, All right, mate, I said, finish the pint. He went, I'll finish when I'm ready. So I was always told, right. For anyone awkward like that, let's get the rest of them out. Leave this cunt to last, right? And if he wants it, he can have it, right? Do you know what I mean? So I thought, we'll come back to you. Next minute, sees Jimmy go back over. And he went, look, lad, you're the only fella in here. He said, and you've still got that pint. Finish the pint, mate. Or oh, fuck off. And he went, I've told you, I'll fucking finish this pint when I fucking finished it. Right, and Jimmy goes, look, la, mate, we're all waiting to go home here. The only person left in the club. And he went, he went to it, Jimmy, Bill, you know what I mean? He went, Rah. he had this horrible little kite. <laughs> and Jimmy went, I'm not, you know, he's a world champion, lad. And whoever I seen that kid did, and he weren't no bully, lad, either. He was a gentleman. You know he is, lad. And whoever seen him, he deserved it. So he goes to it, Jimmy, and he was just too quick, lad. But he went, fuck off, fuck off. And he hit him. Fuck off, right here, right on the bone, right here. You know what the alpha did? Yeah! <laughs> Lad, he just shook his head. I went, fucking now. Yeah! I'm gonna fuck you, right? And I went, whoa. So I ran over, picked them up, grabbed them, and I goes running through the door, right? And I threw him, and he's on the other side of the road, and he went, <laughs> and he's fucking little kite on me, he went, you're all right, you. Oh, thank fuck for that. He said, but you see, I'm used to fighting big fellas like you, he said. He said, see you, you cunts. Get on the car park. Go stand there. So he was like that, looking at Jimmy, and he went, fuck off you, but I'm not there. Start without me close the door. That's when I thought, wow, mate, there's people out there, right, who you look, and he's only little. All right, he looked, though he's had a few scraps, like I said, but there's people out there, mate. Don't get in the ring. Don't get in the cage. But it's just natural hard cases. Yeah. There's loads out there, mate. So anyone who thinks that they get on the fucking juice or they're a big fella and because the that they can fight, you're not. Same with Gary. I remember working one night with Gary and one of our mates, Alan, his bird was coming to get a bit of dough off him because she was going out. So we're on the club about eight o'clock and his bird gets out of a taxi and um, she comes over. And as she comes over, this taxi pulls up and these five fellas get out and I seen one of them grab her ass. Alan didn't say, do you know what I mean? One of them grabbed her ass. I thought, you cunt. Right, but she didn't cause me. She went, you cheeky cunt. You know, like that. Anyway, she come over, got the door off Alan, had a cab waiting with a mate and then jumped back in. So these five fellas come up the door. I thought, these are going to cause us trouble all night. They're doing that already. So when you're not getting in, lad. And everyone goes, what for? I said, nah, I'll tell you later. Because I didn't want Alan to stove his head. Do you know what I mean? So I said, you're not getting in, boys. So he went... So he's standing there, next minute, another cab pulls up, another five gets out. Another cab pulls up, because a lot of stag dudes used to go there, another cab comes out. So this cocky comes, he's at the front, right, and he goes, one, two, three, four, bad all us working on the door, right, and he went, one, two, and he counted 15, he went, mate, we're coming in. It's gone off, hasn't it? Next minute, the cocky cunt, Gary just went, he ran at Gary, Gary just went, fuck off. And I tell you what, lad, he just took the jaw off him, lad. His jaw, it was like a who just went, bingo, he's knocked out. I hit another fella and he just flattened him. And then the rest of the, the brave, all 13, just ran off. Right? So them two are on the floor. My one gets up. Thank fuck, you know what I mean? I wasn't as fucking... Damaging as Gary. That one gets up. Gary's one, lad. He was just, it was just, he was the groom. And his fucking, 
his um, his jaw was at the bottom of lower breath, lad. Do you know what I mean? He did him that hard. And an ambulance had to come and everything. So I'm like, fuck him. We get a phone call then. And then it was like, listen, that kid, you broke his jaw. No one went to plop then, you know, Bill, but he yeah. deserved it. And no one went to plop. And we didn't have all them crazy badges. And no, I know a lot of on here go, hey, he's with bullies, blah, blah, blah. Look, with the lads I wear with, they wear fucking bullies, mate. Maybe, I know they wear, but some wear bullies in the town. And I've worked with a few bullies. But these lads weren't bullies, kid. So he gets a phone call. And it was from him, someone in the Boundary pub down in South End. And he went, listen, lad, there's about 30 fellas in here. He's have just fucking cracked someone. He said, he's the groom. He said, and, um, there's about 30 of them on the way down now. And this is how good doors were. We worked for Joanna for the right. And I was mates with John Ornsby and like Stay and all that. And they ran the, they ran, um, the grafting. And all the lads look at me and he went, oh, fucking hell, mate, what are we going to do? There's about 40 of them coming down here. I said, let me go and see me mate, John. I said, we shoot round at Grafton, which was only two minutes from the no, no, from the month. So, so I shot round and John goes, all right, lad, what's up? I said, lads, a half team of 40 explained and he just went to the lads, come on. And all the lads from the Grafton come round. This is how it was then, Bill. People talk about tour wars. I don't remember tour wars. Yeah. I just remember... Some of the old school having straighteners with each other. Yeah. Right. But I we all got on, lads. I remember jo John going, Come on, lads, let's come round. And everyone come round. Next minute, all these cabs are pulling up, seeing us all outside and just fucked off. So I don't remember. Someone mentioned on the pod and went, I'll oh, tell Dan to talk about our doors. To me, there was so it's no just, It's just a presence there, really, and it's standing okay, there. Okay, a few just... people didn't get on. Yeah. But And had a few straighteners. But there was never like. Door Wars, what? I don't know where that come from. The Door Wars, I think yeah. it's a worry back team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't remember no Door Wars. There was, a, there the was a lot of, uh, like we talked about a few things, you know, back in the day where, you know, your name becomes before, you fucking, before uh, you. Yeah, but yeah, and I remember that, mate. I remember, like, um, I went to work on a certain club in town, and this fella used to come in. And he was one ugly bastard, Bill. You know who he is, lad. I've told you this story and named who he is. But as I say, it's in no names. I'm not a grass. <laughs> I'm not a grass. <laughs> not a grass. No names. <laughs> and um, actually, I got nicked once yeah. off the plod for a murder, attempted murder, me mate. It's a long story. And I got interviewed by the police. And I wouldn't say, I don't, I don't know him. I don't know him. I'd wait. They had me on camera working with all. And um, in the end, the busy went, You're fucking useless. Get out. See no evil. Hear no evil. I think it's one, I know I'm sort of grass the worst thing to be called in my eyes. So us old school never want to be a grass, or none of us are nonsense, we're all cool. So let's go back to the ugly cunt. Right, so um, <laughs> <laughs> he was an ugly bastard, though, weren't he, lad? <laughs> and that's what people used to do, right? He was so ugly, is that people used to send him to collect debts, yet he'd never had a fight in his life. He'd done it on how he looked, Bill. So I remember this club I'm working on. And I'd never met him. He was from the South End. I'd never met him. And he come down like royalty, lad. He come down with about fucking ten fellas and beards and all that. And back in the day, it was a tenner to get in, so it was a one. And if we had the fiddle going, you could have got that one in your ass pocket, you know what I mean? So he comes in, fucking horrible cunt. Walks right to the front, and I'm standing there, thought, who's this cunt? And everyone went, yeah, yeah, you're like five in them and all that. And let him in. Sounds who was that girl, you know, fucking that. I said, who's that? They went, it's blah, blah, that. Look, lad, don't ever fuck with him, you know. <laughs> You'll come unstuck, mate. He said, if he's kicks off or anything like that, come and get one of, I was only young, come and get one of the older lads who know, who knows him. He said, then he'll sort it out, mate. And he'd been seen with, I'd seen him with various people in the city who were names, this cunt, right? Mm. So I thought, oh, it must be one of our case, this cunt, you know what I mean? Fucking hell. Don't want to get on the wrong side of him, like you know, fucking there's all comebacks with him. I believe he's done this and that. Someone actually turned round to me, he went, See him la. So then they said it to me like <laughs> I said, Yeah, he went, He's that evil lad. He'd skin your baby and put salt on it. I thought, fucking hell, that's a fucking bit far. Money on the door on the log and bottle, yeah. What the fuck's happening with that show? Fucking hell. It's only a bluey in or something, you know what I mean? Fucking hell, yeah, fair enough, mate. The evil comes him. So I ended up and a few years later, I went to work on a different bar. And I'm standing there. And he pulls up in a car. And about five of them jumps out. 
right scruffy cunts. Someone dropped them off with about, so about five of them. One stayed in the car, drove off, and about four of them comes, goes to come in. Now, it was back in the day when you couldn't have fucking... Um, I was about five or six years older now. Still, I'd heard of people being frightened of him. Still heard them fucking... You know, he used to go to boozers and, like, um, all up and down Park Road and places like that and not pay for ale. Just, like, bullying, like, landlords and shit like that and, you know, people in there and that. I'd heard all these stories about him. I used to think, he's a horrible bastard. Him. So, anyway, he comes up and... Um, Fucking, he's a right scruffy cunt. He had a pair of trainees on us back in the day when you couldn't wear, wear trainees. You could wear jeans, but you'd have to have a pair of fucking shoes on, Bill. So he comes up and I went, to, all right. Oh, he goes, all right, la. I'm just some big fucking white kid from the North End, you know what I mean? So I said, all right, mate. He went, to, so you can't come in. I thought, I'll stand on to this cunt here. Because, you know, we had a strict manager and fucking. I said, you can't come in, lad. You know the score. He went, do you know who I am? So I said, I know you are, blah, blah. I even mentioned his name. I said, I know you are. I said, let's call him Jimmy. I know you are, Jimmy. Right, he went saying, well, you know to let me in. I said, I'm not letting you in. So he got, he, he mentioned our bosses and then, where are them two, lad? So he goes, they're not here. So he goes, look, kid, I'm going to tell you straight, mate. I've just come from the Royal. He said, me ma's dying. He said, there's fuck all that he can do, do with it, mate. And I could see tears welling up in his eyes, Bill, you know what I mean? He said, now, I want to come in and have a drink, right? I want to have a few whiskeys. He said, I'll be here about an hour. He said, and my bird's going to pick me up from here. Is it all right, lad? And he put his hand out. And how can you say no? So I said, yeah, go on. Get in, Jimmy. I said, all right. Sorry to hear about your mum, lad. Sorry, he went, thank you, lad. Sound. And he was dead sound, lad, right? But we had this to him. Now, this was a typical gobshite. Sometimes you'd ended up working with gobshites who you didn't <laughs> want to work with, kid. Just fucking melon heads, right? And we ends up working, I ends up working. There was only two of us on this night. And we ends up working with this fucking gobshite. And he had the habit built a roll in his neck like Tyson. You know, standing there, lad. And he, he never had a laugh like me. And he'd be rolling his head. And I'd think, oh, I'm stuck with fucking Tyson, am I? He was about fucking 13 stone, you know, rolling his neck, lad. What neck he had. And so it was a quiet night. It was through the week. And I started chatting up some bed. I was a single guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fucker for women. I know you're looking at me now thinking, fucking hell, they're gobbling him like the old man of the sandbag. Back in the, back in the day, guys, I was like a young David Applebaum. <laughs> right, so we're fucking standing there. And I see him going. Anyway, he's going. This Jimmy, he goes, lad, look. I know all that house school. There's me on, there's me at Oh, all that, but he went, thanks a lot for that, lad. I won't forget that. I said, mate, sorry to hear about you, man. And he goes, all right. So as he gets to the front door, Tyson's standing there, isn't he? And he's got the neck on him like that. Now, Tyson didn't know who he was, and he's standing there like that, and he's doing that with his neck. So this Jimmy goes, are you an our case, are you, lad? Tyson's like that, right? And he goes, fuck off. Right, this horrible cunt, the ugly cunt, and slaps him, Right? And Tyson's ass just fell out of him, lad. So I thought, ah, oh, fuck, it's gone off. So I ran over and I fucking pushed this ugly cunt right through the door. And he goes, you, you fucking big steadhead. And I went, and what? You know when you built up, like, anger in you, lads, because yeah. being half swallowing it, I'd seen him for years. Because he'd do, he'd do what he, who he was, he'd take the piss in a bar and you'd be like, can cut me but I can't do nothing he's fucking connected in the city you know what I mean and he went you you fucking big stead I'll fuck you blah blah and he come flying at me I swear Bill I just went and I'm, I've always said it lad I'm not the hardest fella I don't claim to be and I just went fuck off whap and it's put his leg out but I didn't know he was an epileptic lad <laughs> so this ugly cunt's on the floor fucking body popping right fucking doing the fucking the crab and all that lad he's like that and all is me Made shit and start poking up bottles, right? And I went, just then, Tyson legged it, lad. Ran upstairs in this club, left me. And an now mate of mine, Cliffy, right, who used to work with years ago, boss kid, was going past in an acne and seen it. Jumped out the acne and come run over to give me a hand. So me and Cliffy are standing there. I went, come on then. And he shit, Bill, he just had bottles. But I didn't know Plod were watching. So all Plod are fucking watching anyway. They gets out the car. He's still fucking wheeling it on the floor, this cunt, you know what I mean? Doing the whole phone coming from his mouth. I thought, oh, what's up with him? Anyway, 
arrests me. And then he just come round, you know, with grim epileptics. He'd fucking just come round, lad. And um, he gets on his feet. So I'm a fucking rested and all that business. He's got me like that, these two plain clothes. And he went to me, see you, you cunt. I'm going to fucking shoot you. Right? And this busy went, oh, is that what you're going to do? Yeah, and he went, I'll, yeah, I'll come back and fucking shoot you. To this busy, he didn't know they were plod, just plain clothes, you know what I mean? On our asses, going round town every night. He went, I'm going to fucking shoot you. So um, the busy looks at me then and he went, fuck off and let me go, right? I was fucking half buzzing. So next minute, lad, fucking, he's shouting the fucking this, that, shouting that, he's got to do this, he's got to do that, I'm dead, fucking blah, blah. So he fucks off. So Cliffy went, fucking hell, lad. Is that all about? So I told him, he went, there's your mate there. And Tyson was upstairs in the club, shitting himself, looking out of the window like that. He went, lads, you want to fucking get him last? What the fuck's that all about? Heavy laugh. I was that embarrassed for Tyson. I didn't even say nothing to him. Like, so Cliffy goes, lad, you're on your own. I went, well, I'm not with fucking Tyson, am I? So he goes, yeah, I'll, st I'll fucking stand here with you. Instead of coming back. So next week, about an hour later, lad, he'd fucked off to some pub or club. And lad, he was like dad's army he brought back. He had no bull, you know what I mean? It was all a lie. He ended up bringing back all these fucking owl fellas. Well, the and he just went over. <laughs> just went over tried to open the door to fucking do them in. And he just spun off. Next minute, I'm in the gym the next day and everyone's going to me. What have you done? <laughs> fucking hell, mate. You shouldn't have hit him, you know, lad. I went, he can't fight. <laughs> they were like, why do you know who that is? And do you know who that? I went, so fucking well. I said, lad, I'll have him a straight. And then I said, he can't fight. I said, I'm no hard case. He turns his leg. Yeah. Anyway, fella come in to the gym and no one wore bulletproof vests and he went lad put that on and don't go to work for a couple of weeks I went I'm fucking going in tonight lad he went put that vest on I went oh fuck off mate Do you know what happened fuck all yeah. it was just rumours right yeah. he was an ugly twat he was on the juice and he'd done a lot of jail and it was just rumours that went round he was dead hard he'd done this he'd done that and it's like me going see Billy Billy's fucking rock hard you know See Billy puts salt on babies and skins them. See Billy and then them going. See Darren. Darren does this and Darren does that. A lot of it was just absolute bullshit, mate. And I seen a lot of that. That's uh, that's all down to like people's insecurities, isn't it? You mask yeah. it with all that that front. Yeah. So you probably got loads of that back then, weren't it? You know, like he was lads standing and, on standing on the doors. You know, doors, and I'll be stories. honest, mate. There was people who had reputations who hadn't done fuck all, mate. Who had them just two other people. Name dropping. Name dropping. Mm. And it just built up stronger and stronger. And in the end, you believed it yourself, especially when you're only young. But, you know, the, the real names, you know, the real names in the city were some of the nicest fellas I ever met. Yeah. I remember going to train in Vic's gym as a kid. And, like, no one let on to me. And probably one of the hardest fellas to come out of Liverpool was John Hornsby. And I remember just on the tights of pushdowns, fucking big man, big hard case, right fucking... You know, we thought my mate Joe Mack, the other straight, and they're all, oh, you done, Joe. But, you know, he shook hands after it. Proper good lads, you know what I mean? And um, John comes up to me and he went, all right, lad, I'm only a bar 16. He went, fucking looking well there, you know, kid. And I went, nice one, mate. He went, John. I went, all right, John. And lad, he, he ran, he was one of the runners with Steno, like a premier. Fucking nice fellas. Do you know what I mean? There was no, he never come across like, all I found out was all the ones that are that dead tough were always gobshites, mate. And John, he was one of the toughest fella in, in Liverpool, you know what I mean? And what a fucking gentleman he was, mate. Honest, but I found out there was a lot of phonies. He was usually hangers on to the lads yeah. that acted like big hard cases, and he never were, mate. You worked with a few shout hand firms as well, didn't you? I worked with the North on the South, lads. Yeah. I was a bit of a fucking... I was I a bit of a prosy. I went with everyone, <laughs> Bill. I went with every firm, lad. Yeah, so I've seen it all, lad. i tell you what was a good time, lad. When we used to get the women. Now, being allowed permission. <laughs> Your missus is like, give you the owl. Give me a heads up here. Time ago, you know what I mean? <laughs> back then, mate, you know, fucking hell. Now, so. things happen, don't they? We do yeah. things, we, you know, it's just, it is what it is. You know, and I was taking her, you know, I was entering fucking Mr. Universes and all that gear, and I was fucking doing all the comps, and I was a big kid. Some might call me a big handsome guy, really, back then, you know what I mean? I didn't have the Turkish handbag I've got now, the Marmara Summer Holiday one. And um, we, 
I was a single man. We used to get like a lot of birds, you know what I mean, back in the day. And I uh, got a few tales about birds. But I'll just tell you one, because I said I've got all the kids as well. Now, please don't want to fucking say it's some kid in school, seeing your dad talking about some bit. Oh, it's fucking heavy on the minute. But yeah, there's one fucking. So we um, get this bird one night. I nicknamed it the Predator Bill, right? So she's a fucking barmaid on this bar I'm working at, and the Predator's giving me the eye. She weren't the best looking, Bill. You know, I class myself as an eight back then, Bill, kid. She was a bar of four. <laughs> so, you know, I could have me fig back then, Bill. And um, she was a bar of four, lad, and um, she's giving me the eye. And I was loaded up on testosterone, Billy. I would have fucking, I would have shagged anything, mate. <laughs> And so at the end of the night comes, she's fucking talking to me. She said, I love bodybuilders, you know. And he said, do you? Yeah. She went, do you want to come back to mine? And my mate was dropping me off and he went, fucking get it. Just tits are massive on it. I said, she's not the best though, lad. He's got fucking, fucking tits on it, do you know what I mean? So I said, oh, go on then. So she went, come back to mine. So my mate drops us off in Waver Tree, lad. I'm not much of a North Ender. I've never even been to fucking Waver Tree, lad. I was about 22. <laughs> never even been to Waver Tree, lad. So I goes to wave he pulls up outside and he makes in the car. Me and the predator gets out. <laughs> and we walks in and it had fucking big massive door on it, fucking lovely house, you know, like an Edwardian one. Yeah. And I'm thinking the predator's got a few fucking bobby in me, do you know what I mean? Opens the door, big tie. Fucking hell, Bill. I was living on a bondy on Smith down on Scotty with a red portable on, lad. Do you know what I mean? I didn't even have a cuca. So I was half made up getting in this yeah. ken. So she so we goes in that way. Lovely tiles, all done out, boss, fucking big telly and all that. No one had big tellies back then. <laughs> and I'm looking at her, oh, fucking hell, she's got all this cunt. She went, let's go straight to my room. So I said, all right, shoots up to a room. Lad, goes in the, b I went, can you use your bog first? When it goes in the bog, lad, the other B-Day. Lad, the other B-Day, mate, no scouts, <laughs> that B-Day kid. And he had match, you know, matching sinks, lad. So a ma say a ma had a sink and a da had a sink, then a BJ, then a bat, then this walking shower. Kid, I had a shower, you plug in on the bat, lad, that you fucking get your head under, lad. That was about all I had in my flat in the doors. Well, this predator can't come in fucking handy here with a can like this, you know what I mean? So um, she went, come to me room. As soon as we got to the room, lad, you should have seen the kip of the room. Lad, it fucking stunk a teenager's feet. <laughs> they was all skiddies on the floor. Now I don't like it, lad. I don't mind a pair of all skiddies, lad. But these ones were skiddies, mate. I don't mind a little bit of a tang, though. You know what I mean? You know, we all don't, lad. It's bought a bit of a, a pheromone in it on a bed. You know what I mean? But, lad, these were fucking skiddies, mate. Caked in shite. You know, the tongue bit was had a bit of shit on it. And I went, fucking hell, mate. It's rough in this room. So I said, are you mad and dad in the next room and that? Uh, no, this is student accommodation. I standard one lad and I went, Oh, you've wrecked this room, mate. It was fucking <laughs> manky kid. Yeah. So it's like a hippie type of bed. You know, Kurt, you know, like fucking hell. Bed spreads hung up on the wall yeah. and all that gear, right? So I'm fucking sitting there with her and I'm like, fucking hell. She had you know them little like them tiny teeth that just have gums. She was like, <laughs> with the moonlight hit the predator, and I could see these like little stubbly teeth, and I thought, I've got to neck this cunt. <laughs> Throwing a shift, I'm going to have to neck her, mate. And like the moonlight hit, and she tried to look nice in the moonlight, kid, and she went, <laughs> you know, like that. It's just fucking horrible. Little fucking, um, what do I call them? Them little teeth, jelly top teeth. You know, like that. I thought, oh, she's got fucking jelly tops, man. What the fuck? Anyway. Strips it off. She had these massive tits, Billy. <laughs> they just flew out the bra like to the fucking Mitchell brothers. And I'm fucking staring at them. I told you, you're a fucking cunt. So I get a grip of it anyway. I'm getting a grip of it. And she went, I'm on. I thought, oh, what the fuck have I come back here for? You know what I mean? <laughs> Chanel Predator. So she shouldn't have got me back if you was on. You know what I mean? So she went like that and she took her skirt off, Bill, right? And I'm mean, why I called her the Predator. Have you ever seen the movie The Predator, right? <laughs> There's a scene where the Predator comes when they're in the jungle and it grabs some fella <laughs> and it pulls out the insides of him and it's all hanging down and he throws it across <laughs> the room like that, right? <laughs> she gets this little mouse's tail, Bill, right? And she went, it's all right, isn't it? And she pulls it out of it, right, Billy? And I tell you what, they declare it on it. 
he was just, he was just dripping in clary, and he was all lumps on it. And she went, yeah. And the was on the scene out of the bed. So if you can get that scene up, throw it up. It's fucking horrible. And she went, yeah. And I went over the side of the room and I went, fucking horrible. I can get legged it under the bed. It was horrible. And I'm looking and I went, oh, for fuck's sake, mate. So I just thought, bend the cunts over. Best thing you can do in these situations, boys, isn't it? Bend the cunts over. I thought, I'll go in with a bit of fucking finger in here, mate. Next minute, lad. The Predators all lad. It was like the Bacon Head Tunnel kid. I'm a bit... At the time, lad, I was a big hombre, right? I had these big, crazy forearms on me. I think me mate measured them once. And they were 16 inch, just me forearm, right? When I was, like, fucking heavily juiced up and all that. So I was like that. I thought, one finger. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fucking hell, Predator. And I just flew in. But, lad, it was roasting in there, Bill. I don't know what was in it. It was roasting. I could feel all the guns on me. Ah, lad, it was fucking horrible. And I don't know what uh, she had in it, but she had like these two fucking, like tangerines, lad, and I was touching them, but the predator was screaming, made up, lad, like that. I just thought, what the fuck am I doing here? But my arm was in the predator, mate, but the predator's like that, looking back, she had this horrible ear, the little mashes, and I'm like, fucking bastard. And lad, in the end, lad, I thought, I was shattered, Do you know what she said to me? Great technique. Great technique, Bill, I just fucking volleyed her head in with my arm. So I pulls it out. And I was just covered again in clarity oh, all over lad. And I'm standing there and it looks at my arm. It's fu- I've got a big arm on me, Billy, and I'm looking at the arm. It's covered in veins where it's been working dead arm like a workout. <laughs> I was sweating. It was all veiny. It looked like a massive giant cock with just blood all dripping on it. And she went, now it's your turn. Billy, I had the worst <laughs> undies on I've ever had in my life. Right? No way that the bottom of the fucking drawer, you think. Oh, and I've had these since I was about 10 and I squeezed myself in them not knowing I'd get me half because I would have put on a nice yeah. pair of fucking bills do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'd squeeze them out anyway she just gets the bills kid and she just pulls them off me right and I'll have Petey Petey had done in me fucking belly button like because Petey seen me arm come out and he must have thought that big cunt his arm has gone up there I've got no chance so Petey just ran up my belly button lad, and Petey's like that just peeping out me pubes. You know what I'm just saying? <laughs> Lad, you've scared me here. I'm intimidated, mate. Look at the fucking arm on you that's been up here. I'm going nowhere. So PG's looking and I went, fucking hell, mate. Best throw an Allen key in this belly button trying to get out. So she comes over and she just gets me cock and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's like she was like, it was like a full moon bill coming through the window. She was thirsty for blood, lads. She was like that. Blah, blah, blah. And I went, oh, kid, I'm just down in there. Will PT come out, lads? Would he come out and she went, he, he's not playing, he's not playing. I went, I'll oh, kill him, you want to get off, you know, kid, I'm going to get off, kid. I just pulled them out, bills up. Fucking hell, next minute, kid, I'm on the rope, like in a taxi down. I thought, fuck that predator, leave here, mate. So I just left her well alone. She was fucking manky, but I, I could tell you, boys, right, loads of stories like that, right, of funny ones about birds and that. Because we did get some birds back in the day mate you know fucking lot a lot of birds but i won't do respect for me kids i mean missus i can't tell them you're just getting the predator one i'll leave she was bad enough i'll leave you with visions of the predator mate, in the moonlight fucking horrible she was kid uh, uh, lad me head's hurting fucking hell three months <sighs> i met you right i remember yeah. meeting you about oh yeah yeah it was about, almost two years ago i think now was it two or three yeah, of them about two years i think it was all say we're in 2021 no while yeah, yeah so it was yeah december two, it was in this it was december it was just before christmas yeah we i was doing, still competing we were doing it was 2019 i was still competing yeah and we, that's when know, the last of the competition yeah. were, there's been no competitions in my federation since 2019 well so i'd never heard of you or met you yeah. before then Right, yeah. which is mad because we live in Liverpool, but yeah, we've both we're both on our different paths and different journeys, and you know, mine took me to other places. But I met you, and we were doing a little bit of acting because you're a bit of a budding actor on the sly, aren't oh, you? I did you have a little. And I remember you walked in, right, to seeing you, and you're a massive lad. Like you had a, yeah. a blue top yeah. on, like a little jumper, pair of bends on, yeah, and this Pomeranian fucking little. Yeah, pill. they told me to bring our dog. Yeah, we both done a bit. We were in some drama, weren't we? You playing then. Ricky Tomlinson's uh, son? son? Yeah, that yeah. like. Hopefully for the kid who does it, it takes off, you yeah. know what I mean? Gush him all the luck in the world, but like my head fell off with that acting bill. It's not for me. It's not for me Saying either. that, I've just done a little bit more with some of it with a proper company. Yeah. 
and um, Anthony, the director, he'd done a bit of filming in this. He spoke to me and went, oh, I've got to have you in this documentary about Liverpool. It's about the drug and club scene. And that was for Sky One. And we got paid boss money, right? I'd done two two bits of filming in it. And all I pay is fucking hell, lad. Jimmy the drug dealer, right? And um, I played him, didn't I, Jimmy? Yeah. And, it, mate, you were, you were writing lists for your food for the day and all that. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. Because after working with Anthony, right? And he, to be honest, I was made up. He messaged me back and went, after we filmed, and went, lads, I've got to work with you again. And I was fucking over the moon, you know what I mean? And then we got on and I made all the cast laugh and made the day a lot easier for them, yeah. he said. So I was just buzzing that he said, lad, he was absolutely made up with the work I'd done. But I was working on this other one, right? This fucking, <laughs> this drama series. And like, one night the director phones me up and he went, all right, Darren. You sitting down. So I said, Yeah, yeah, what's up, lad? So he said, I've just had um, an agent on the phone from London there for and I said, What? He said, I've had an agent on the phone from London. He said, They've seen I've sent them a thing of you to looking. The gentleman was getting made, you know, with Guy Ritchie. So he said, The looking, he said, for a scouser. He said, you know, a FD one. And that's at the time I was competing again yeah. and he said you know as I like fucking gangster fucking slash Jim Ed in it he said I can't think of no one else in this city who get this part <laughs> this part is yours and I went lad are you sure he went lad I've just sent them a bit of your fucking work you've been doing for me do you want you to come to London he said you're gonna go and meet Guy Ritchie he said and um, I'll come with you he said, and you want to look at another fella for another role, I'll come with you, blah, blah, blah. He said, and, um, you know, lad, things are looking good for you. Lads, I went to bed. I told me, bed, me, bed, went, oh, go away. Two of us are sitting there, I went, fucking hell. But my head, Billy, I'm round a Ben, lad, my head started <laughs> racing, lad, you know, as it does. I went, I want to say to Guy Ritchie, you know, oh, like, you know, I'm saying, like, oh, what's happening, Guy? No, all that, lad, in your head, and I, about 10 o'clock when I received the call lad. I don't think I slept that night lad. I was just <laughs> fucking hell. by the end of the night I was choosing whether I was going to go on to Jonathan Ross or I was going to be on Graham Norton and I was going to actually I had it in my head what I was going to say to Jonathan Ross listen don't start all that fucking he's from a council estate gear with me and <laughs> Scouts said I love me nan and all that because that's what they all do though. why does every Scouser go on and go I love me nan you know what I mean you think fuck off you fucking bellend every bellend that does X Factor or any reality I uh, mean little nan I love me nan. and you're like oh mate were you, you fucking making a cunt of us I thought I'll fucking tell that Jonathan fucking Ross I said if he starts I said fucking tell him I said to fucking shut right up before I said, oh, don't fucking do none of them wise cracks about Liverpool, you, you cunt. And all that robbing and all that gear. I'll tell you now what, John, and I thought, Graham Morton might be more me, lads. I don't like want things for him because he doesn't like, you know, he's a, f I don't mind the old fucking Graham Norton, lads. So anyway, I went to my bed, went, don't start telling people in the gym. Kid, I hadn't slept all night, lad. By the end of the night, lad, I was living in a fucking, I was living in a fucking five bedroom fucking semi in fucking Blundell Sand with Lecky Gates. By the time nine o'clock come in the morning, I hadn't slept a wink, Bill. My fucking head was gone. So I'm training two kids in the morning, two good pals of mine. Right, I'm training them. They're like, all right, lad. I said, yeah, he went, fucking hell, mate. What's up? I went, not. I can't hold my own piss, Bill. And I'm like, Lads, a guy Richie wants me to I'm on that gentleman there in London. And they're like, fucking hell, mate, yeah? I said, yeah, lad, apparently, like, um, he's seen a little clip of me and wants that guy. You know what I mean? And all that, lad, turn a bit of a body on why I want that guy and all that. Like, they're like, fucking hell, lad, good luck to you there, kid. Everyone who come through the fucking door, Billy, that day, got the Guy Ritchie story. I was believing it myself, lad. Anyway, I'm looking at me blower because the director said to me, I'll ring you today about when we've got to go down and what's happening next, kid. I had that fucking phone in my hand and I'm fucking every two minutes. I'm trying to train people every two minutes. I'm like that. I'm sure this fucking volume's not right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sheep checking, lads. You know what I mean? <laughs> she too, don't, don't you, Bill? Yeah. You know what I mean? Your head runs races. Yeah. No fucking call. No call. Got to you about five o'clock. I went, I'll, I'll ring him here. I'll ring him. Hello, mate. He went, all right, Dad. And I said, what's happening? Wait, what? 
I went, Guy Ritchie, lads, what, what, what have they said? Oh, yeah, they're going to get back to me tomorrow. Sorry, mate, should have called you. I went, all right, went on. So bad. They're calling me back tomorrow. Kid, another sleepless night. <laughs> fucking hell, mate. I was over in Dubai this night, kid. I was fucking <laughs> ordering champagne by the minutes. I think I was even wearing a monocle, lad, at one point, lad, with a cane, lad. Yeah. I'd lost the plot, lad. Yeah. I was living the high life. Signing autographs in cans, lad. I was fucking going for it, mate. Me yeah. and Yeah, we were gonna go. I believe he like scalds so me and him. We're gonna go for a bevy. All right, guy. We're gonna let me tell you about this time. I know. I was on the log and bottle and got a fell in a headlock. Lad, I'd lost the plot, lad. Me and him. So um, the next day come, fucking sweating, mate. No phone call, Bill. Get my ring. Hello, mate. Um, what's the what's the London firm saying? What London firm, lad? You know, the, the guy Richie thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting back to me, lad. Me heart just went, you know, and you're, you're down. I went, mm. oh, fucking hell, mate. So for about four days, I left it. Didn't get in touch. Still sweating on it. The call, you know. Started Googling the fucking movie and everything, <laughs> me, lad. And then I had a mate who's an actor. And he went to me, lad, I haven't heard nothing. He said, do you want me to get in touch with me agent and see if... Um, Guy Ritchie is like looking for parts because they, they come up. So I said, yeah, if you want. So he come back to me about two days later and he goes, there's no part for a big scouser on there, you know, lad. He's had a look. He said, he can't see. And I went, yeah, but my mate fucking knows him, you know. He knows he's fucking got his foot in the door. Honest, I'm telling you, lad, they're after the big scouser. That's my role. Fucking hell, mate. Another week went by. Fuck off. I'm in a bad place, Bill. I'm in a bad place <laughs> mentally now, lads. And hell, I've gone from being on Graham Norton to fucking being in this house scrapyard and here freezing <laughs> with fucking leaks coming through the roof. I'm fucking dev, old lad. So anyway, I rings him up. Last time I rang him, I went, hello, lad. I said, um, what, what are they saying? Who? No, the London, the London Brigade, you know, what are they saying? What London Brigade, lad? I said, Guy Ritchie. He went, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna be back, get back to me. You know when? I knew it was all just shite. People just spin your shite. You see this fella, Anthony, now? Yeah. He made phones me the other day and he done him. Um, what was the documentary? Because you're in it as well, Bill, aren't you? We're doing it, we're doing, you're in it and I'm in it just playing like, I play like the crime, watch scenes, don't I? Yeah, yeah. I'm only in it for a bit. But it was boss money, lad. And um, this Anthony, he done that thing on ITV, my girl. Yeah. And he's just a fucking sound fella. You know what? He's one of the lads, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's had like big successes and he works for Universal. So my mate Emil phones me up. This was only a couple of weeks ago when he went to him. And I was just going to go out to the beach, do a bit of cardio along the beach. You can't tell me things like this, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? And he goes, and he just phoned me, you know, that. And he went, yeah, he went, he's just been editing, he's put it all together, the clip. He said, you're brilliant. He said he wants to work with you in the future. I went, you know, you're trying to be that cool, aren't you? And I went, what did he say, lad? No, like, you're trying to be like an hard case cool, aren't you? I was fucking made up. He went, I went, what did he say, lad? He went, he said he wants to work with you in the future. I went, yeah, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be bad, wouldn't be bad. He went, I went, what else, what, 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 what else did he say? Like, you know, you're trying to plug a bit more out of the man. He's only said that, but I'm trying to drag just that little bit extra compliments out of him. No, he just said, like, you know, by the cast and you had everyone laughing and it, you made it easier. He said he looked at your work and he's fucking, you should do a lot more of this. And for his next project, if there's a path for you, you're in it. Yeah. So I said, oh, okay. He said, is he all right, Annie? Because he's me mate and Meals mate. He went, yeah. yeah, he's just over in Czechoslovakia. Can he fucking say? He's in Czechoslovakia <laughs> now. He said, um, he's doing a movie, The Barbarians. That was it. That was it, Billy. Went. <laughs> he went, joking. Joking, Meal, you shouldn't have said this, lad. Because <laughs> you'd have me up the wall. I didn't even phone you back. He went, joking. And Meal said to him, well, if you like Darren so much, why don't you fucking take him with you to fucking Czechoslovakia for this barbarian movie? And he just laughed it off. For me, Bill, that way and a laugh. I went out walking, right? And yeah. I'm walking along Crosby. And then you get to that Bebo bank and these mansions. mansions. I'm looking at the mansions, kid. <laughs> I was the barbarian in that film. But the fella said he liked me. Me head had come up. Lad, I'd brought one of them Kens with a giant telescope in the window. 
looking over at Wales. Yeah. Lad, me head fell off. By the time I got home, I went, lad, have a word with yourself. <laughs> You're fantasising again, you stupid cunt. So that's me with acting. If he phones me up and offers me another part, I'll do it because I really enjoyed it this time and realised that yeah. some people say, and do what they're gonna do. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it is. It's a, it's a tough it, game. Yeah. It is a tough game to get into, like, but it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's rewarding at the same yeah. time. So, but you're a little bit of a budding there. Uh, you're a little bit of a budding actor when you're uh, you're you're abroad in Las Vegas and that, weren't you? Oh, no, the I the cab the drivers, yeah, you had them up yeah. the wall. You told me that one yesterday. That yeah. story. As I said, them. I'm not like you know. I work my ass off, right, just to get me kids and me bed holidays and the best. I might be a scruffy cunt, but they're not. You know, it's all about my bed and the kids, you know what I mean? I'm not asked to buy myself, you know what I mean? And um, we like to do about, you know, if we, we can get a couple of holidays in a year. We I always go to the States once a year with just me and my bed and in my mind the kids and we have our little party out there. And we go to California first. We've done it for a fucking long time, Billy. And then we'll go to Vegas. And I, I like Vegas because I like to go and watch the bodybuilding of Mr. Olympia. And I've been doing that since about 2012. The first year never went last year because obviously it was COVID. Do you know what I mean? But if it's on again this year, I'll go to California. I'll go and train with all the Yanks and all that over in Gold's Gym in California. I'll go watch the Olympia. I'll go and fucking party as well. We like to party. I don't mind partying for a day or two out in Vegas because that's where all Vegas is good for. It's just a fucking souped up fucking Blackpool. It jumped up Blackpool, Vegas, lad. But um, I always like to have people on in Vegas. So anyway, me mate two trains here, Dom. Our kids were dancing at that Hall of Fame in Vegas. So we all went out. Me and Dom were the only two dars that went with all these fucking screaming kids filling about 20 miles. <laughs> but we weren't asked, you know what I mean? So we just had me and him just on ground in the day. And, you know, we watched the kids. Obviously, you watch your kids uh, competing because both our kids are really good at dancing. His missus runs the school and it's a boss school and all that. And so um, they get offered to go roll around the world, lads. It's fucking boss, you know, and they are really good dancers, the kids in the school. And so we go to Vegas, and they were dancing at that Hall of Fame. And now I know Vegas that well because I've been there that many times, Bill. Is that I know where the gyms are. So there's this boss gym called Las Vegas City L Club where Jay Cutler and all that thing. Lads, you want to see the size of it? It's fucking unbelievable, Billy. I've never, I've seen the Gold's gym, right? And I've seen a few gyms in Dubai when I went and. Went out to Dubai with me yeah, mate there, right? Yeah. I was in Dubai a long time there, about about eight weeks with me mate. And um, I tell you the gyms there, they were in a patch on this Las Vegas City Health Club. Yeah, I'll even remember the name of the road. There's about 10 of them there, but this is the one on Park Avenue. And it's saying there, so I knew the script, right? If you're out of town and you're not a yank, it's 20 quid a day to get in. They're not cheap, lad. Gold's gym, lad, is 40 quid a day to get in if you're not a, an, an American fucking you know, is yeah, it? yeah they just swat the tourists right so someone put me onto it and I'll ask because scouts is an I'll ask us, aren't they, like, right? <laughs> so I said do you want to come to the gym so my mate goes yeah go ahead so he goes up this fucking gym anyway and um, I knew the script I didn't tell him what but we got in the cab and I went hi can you take us through on Park Avenue please and so he's having a lot of us like that <laughs> anyway, it's like oh fuck I love these shaking laughing I went yeah, we just go in the gymnasium up there. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I have a little combo with the fucking the cab drive. And he's like, oh, lad, you're heavy, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so he gets to the reception and um, the bear comes out and I thought to you, so if you say you move to that, if you, they're not, they're not as switched on as us, the Yanks, right? Yeah. So if you go to them and you go, I've just moved in the area and I'm, I'm looking for a gymnasium mm. and they give you a week's pass, Billy. So I thought, it's worth a one at each, lads, you know what I mean? Yeah. We were there for a week. So I thought, I'll train five days, have two days off, still do my normal routine, because I love to train. And uh, me mate Tom likes to train as well. He trains in here and here. So he goes up. And I said, you want to see this fucking gym? And he goes, lads, a bit batty though, innit? Look at the fucking price. I went, lads, I'll get a two passes. Watch this. So he goes, I'm the very good. <laughs> Can I help you? I went, yeah. We're from um, out of town. I said, we've moved here. And she goes, oh, yeah, the dead light health and dead, dead light, Andy. Goes, yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm from New York City. And she goes, New York City? Hey, you've got a strange accent. She was hot. She's half <laughs> onto me, Billy. She's shy to American accent. And I went, yeah. She went, I'm from New York, too. What about are you from? 
I went, I couldn't think of nowhere, Bill, right? The only place I ever remember was Mike Tyson. He used to come out and he used to go, from the Catskill Mountains, didn't he? And I went, I'm from the Catskills. She went, you don't sound like you're from the Catskills. You know, like that. Down there, it's hard. And I, yeah, I said, I might do a lot of traveling. I said, um, my my mom, I said, she's from a place in Liverpool in England. Oh, she goes, okay, yeah. I said, and um, I travel from here to the Catskills. <laughs> I said, so my accent, it really differs. And she went, yeah, I can hear the British accent. I can hear the British I, Yeah, she went, oh, what are you guys doing in here? And I said, well, I'm in the movie business. And she goes, lad, she's gullible as fuck. Yeah? I went, yeah. She went, what have you been in? I went, I was a child star. <laughs> she goes, you was a child star? Tell me. <laughs> I went, you might, my little, me mate's just fucking out his head to how the light. I went, I was in a soap back in the UK called Brookside. She went, I've never heard of it. I went, you maybe may be able to catch it on cable on reruns. <laughs> right? And she's like, who did you play? I went, um, Jimmy Carkill's son. I said, um, <laughs> young Jimmy. She went, wow, how long was you in it? I went, 10 years. She went, that's unbelievable. I went, what are you doing here? I said, again, I'm in a movie. She went, your friend, he doesn't talk much. I said, he's Russian. <laughs> we're like that, Bill, lad. She was just fucking, she was loving it, kid. Next one, I said, we're going to be here about six months, you know? And she went, oh, I'll give you a free weekly pass each. <laughs> I went, that'll be great. So next one, the kids, he's right. Mr. <laughs> pass out. We each two are saved in your ass, Ben. Give it to me, my mate, the Russian. He's like, that, looking at me, you know what I mean? Every day, she'd come in, she would go, how's the movie going? You know, there was a fucking five days. It's going awesome. The movie's <laughs> awesome, right? And that's, I couldn't help it, but me bed would go to fucking pieces. I'd even be getting a cab. I like the cab would go, where to? And it's fucking, I used to go to this mall. It's called a South Mall. You get all the fucking Under Armour and Night Grip that cheap. <laughs> I always go there. It's a little bit of a Jenny. And he love a gab. But Billy, I can't help it. I love playing the fucking, the fool, lad. And me bear to be like, oh, Dan, don't do that snide American accent. <laughs> and I get in the cab. I always think that if you're not a Yank and you get in a cab or you go anywhere, they bump you, don't they? Yeah. If you know they're not from fucking America, you're taking them all around the world. So I get in the cab and go, hey, where to, buddy? <laughs> South Mall, please, South Mall. You know, like that. <laughs> Nice day, guys. You on vacation? Yeah, we usually come out here about two times a year. You see them looking, think, where's this come from? Yeah, <laughs> Strange accent. Yeah, traveling a lot. Parents are from UK and, you know, United States. I said, so I travel a lot. And that's where the accent comes from. Oh, oh. So lads, I'm so to this one kid. And he goes, what you do for a living? And I guess with the brookie, the brookie one again. <laughs> Child actor I was, and I'm sort of here looking for work at the moment. I said, and I'm working on a piece now. And he's like, I was an actor too. <laughs> I went, were you? He went, yeah, you know, but I give up on the dream. He said, I ended up working here on the cabs 24-7. And, you know, I was in Shakespeare plays. And I'm going, man, that's so sad. Why did you give up on the dream? I mean, bad lad. This is like, like a proper it. deep conversation. Yeah, lad, I'm going deep with this young I lad. Believe in it. Lad, he's fucking <laughs> sucking it right in. Some else look at the fucking go on me, lad. Some else goes and just sucking him right in. And he's going, yeah, and I, you know, I let the dream go, buddy. I went, that's so sad. I said, you should never let your dreams go. <laughs> but he's like, it's lad, he's looking. But the lad, they're loving it. Lad, he just take it in. I said, never let go of the dream buddy just hang on in there and he's hey, like buddy yeah and he's like man you're right i don't know why i ever started doing this i said go back to class you need to go back to class <laughs> right i mean it's like that kid you know just a rant, lad. we falls off lads and it gives him a score or something. give him a tip and he gets out and i went hey and he went thank you man and thank you i needed the guidance i went don't you ever give up on that dream Ever. <laughs> and he went, lad, he just went, bang, bang, fuck off, mate. Up and I was just screaming. Me bed went, you know, fucking knob it, you know, fucking stop it. I couldn't help it. Even some time when I walked into the club, this fucking big black fella standing there. And I went, whoa, are you a bouncer? And he went, yeah. <laughs> I bounce. And I went, wow, mate, you're a scurry guy. I said, 
do they have fights in here? Right, he used to be a lot of lad. He was sitting there in his beach lad. He was working on a fucking bar in his beach, and he went, "Yeah, I've had a lot of fights." You know, like that. And I went, "Oh man, I've never had a fight in my life. It'd be so scary having a fight. Good job you're here to protect us." You know, like that. Lad, he was just fucking loving it. He's a fucking gobshank with ten star. Yeah, he's a fucking legend. I was going, "It's guys like you that keep us safe at night, man." Some crazies around here, lad. I mean, Ben went, fuck off. Just have your bevy and sit down. <laughs> leave him. <laughs> Fuck's sake, mate. You can't pull it off. The accent shite. My daughter was sound, lad. You yeah. know what I mean? She loved having a scream, mate. I'm the same, though. I might go abroad and you have a scream a day. I just take the piss. You think it's just dinner, Jenny? Yeah. Just to have a yeah. laugh. Yeah. Just to have a laugh. Not, not, on a, not on fucking where you'd hurt someone's feelings. Why? Well, I try not to, but, you know, just like a piss. Same as we've all been laughing the other couple of months back when we had that kid in the gym. I'm very particular who comes in, lads. You know, yeah. like some kid, and I let them let him in. And the next minute, one of the lads sent me a video of him and calling himself Sexy Legs. And he had a bar. This is how these new young generation of fucking bodybuilders act like. And he had a bar and he was going, you know, at the bar, putting himself on social media. I messaged them and went, hey, you. Because I like a laugh, but that's not a laugh yeah. to me. That's just a dickhead. I said, hey, you, you fucking sausage. You're bad. Because I get yeah. loads of people going, can I turn in your gym? Look, the gym's private, mate. If you want a PT off me, you can come in. If you mean mates, you can come in. But it's only for PTs. Me and me missus doing PTs because that's what we try and do when we're not on lockdown all day. Just PTs. like, And that's what I like. Because the old school gyms are the best, the best gyms. The new school ones, I've got a load of new school people in. And I don't like them, lads. You know, sexy legs there on the bar, fucking dancing. I can't handle that, Bill. I'd rather us just say, like, like when I go out for a bevy, I go out with John and Smigger and a few others, just all old school fellas, and we just sit there laughing and ripping each other all night. And that's that's the. Well, that's it, cause like you like. There's no, what? there's no ego, Bill. No. There's no showing off. You know what I mean? You see what I'm behind all she, that, lads. She want to know you, lads. You're like you're an old school hard working. Yeah. Grafter. Yeah. Right. You've never been to jail. You've never yeah. had to go to jail. No, you I know, you've done no. things. You've done no. things. You know that 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 present themselves situations yeah. that happen, and it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But a be above above and beyond. You just work hard and yeah, you look after your it, family, lads. keeping that's it simple. That's all I, mean? I want to do, lads. I don't want to do anything else. And we we we, we talked like fucking... me kids want for nothing, Billy. Yeah. You and want yeah, for nothing, yeah, it's like it goes back to when you're a kid. Remember yeah. when you were telling me about like your little, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and how it's you like, felt then. We went. I'm not my man and dad, right? Where I've got my work ethic is coming from my dad. He worked for Guinnesses, and he worked 16 hours a day, and he worked 12. But if he was 16 to do, he was first with his hands up to put food on the table. We had a lovely home, lad. Um, you know, we were clean as fuck. My ma had OCD. She had to be out doing the fucking brass or on the front door, her own windows inside. Hey, lads, put that fucking plate away. Put your shoes away. Don't come in here. Take your shoes off. And my ma was so house proud. It was unbelievable. And anyone who knows my family knows how that's my how my ma was. Right. But we were always spotless. But she weren't asked about names, Bill. So, like, we were always spotless. I had decent clothes. But, like, you know... I didn't get, like, the name Taney's till I was about 12, right? And that was probably out of peer pressure. But I always remember Butters Bats on Scotty, right? And I hate this cunt if you're fucking watching. You'll know who you are, right? <laughs> Got him back years later, lad. And um, I'm at the Bats. And this kid, is dad worked on the oil rigs. And back then, if your dad worked on the oil rigs, most people's dad working 12-hour shifts and getting a one a week. We're talking the 80s, mate, early 80s, right? So, like, his dad worked in, in the, um, in the watching call it, the, on the rigs in Scotland. So, I think he was on, I remember hearing rumours, you know, like, you're a kid. But he was, I was on six or seven, son of a week. They went on holiday abroad. We went with the Blaze game. You know what I mean? They he had the tan and all that, you know what I mean? And he's about four years older than me, Bill. And I've never been bullied in my life. But this was the nearest I come to getting bullied, mate. And the bats was, if you remember, Bill, on a Friday, in the old-fashioned bats, right, you used to get these inflatable big tyres out for the kids on a Friday. So every kid wanted to get there about four o'clock after school. So back then, your ma would wrap your cosy in a towel and roll it like a sausage roll. And I lived a spit throw away from the bats. I'd 
be four o'clock and all of that. You, you know, kids your own age. You're going, you're going to bats, going to bats. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to bats. And I used to just have trainees on out of the market, no names. And so I'd be like that with me sausage roll under my arm outside the bats, lad. I usually remember this, come, Bill. And he used to come down the line. And back then, he was like Adidas, Kirk, and Samba, and Mamba. I just had ones out of Grady, but I was fucking spotless, Bill, right? And um, he'd come along the line. This cunt's about four years old, and he'd go, you're stin, they're good. And he'd have the best scene he's on, lad, you know what I mean? They're good, they're good, they're shite. They're, and he'd just go down the line on a Friday while we were all, we're only all from fucking Bailey, Scotty. And the cunt would go down the line, he'd pick him, and he'd get to me, and he'd go, get on you, you scruffy little cunt. I think they were called Speed Kings, lad. <laughs> Speed Kings, they're from Grady. And he'd fucking led me, Bill. And I'd get the sausage roll, kid. And I'd just say, no. And I'd go home. And I'd think, you bastard, mate. But I wouldn't moan to me, ma. You know what I mean? You just got on with it. Went, oh, oh mum, I've got, what have you got? PDA or something? What have they got? PSD and all that. I'll go in the bats. <laughs> fuck off, you stupid cunt. Get the fucking back. I never told anyone. I just thought, ah, oh, fuck you, you fucking cunt. I hate you. I was the only person like, that I hated as a kid. Because you do it to me all the time. And I had no... Elder cousins, I was the oldest out of us all, and I had no elder brothers or elder cousins. I was the oldest kid in our family, so he knew I had no one to go and get. Do you know what I mean? So he would give me shit at the U Club, shit at the bats. And I went and seen me heart it would sink. Because he wouldn't, like, hit me. he just ridicule me through, like, trainees and that. And even though I was spotless, and some kid had to see this man bit, and the tongues would be hanging off the front because they were man, but they were all right, you know what I mean? My ma wouldn't have never seen me go out with trainees like that or with holes in and all that. They just were out of the market, lad. So I remember one Crimbo coming. I mean, and I go, what do you want? And I went, get us a pair of Puma Jopper. Puma Jopper, <laughs> lad. I was fucking made, made up with them. And we lived in the flats then. And um, she got them just before Christmas. And Bill, I used to get them off the top of the wardrobe. I'd smell them. You know, fucking pair of beer with the I'd slide them on and I'd walk around on mat and I'd put them back on the thing. I couldn't fucking wait to pull put them on. Anyway, Kimbo come, had me puma on, I was fucking made up. I thought, this cunt can't say a fucking thing to me now. So anyway, goes to bats, gets me sausage roll. A few weeks later, I've got the puma on. Friday night, flying. You can say fuck all to me. I'm flying here, mate. Comes down the line, the little horrible fat cunt, and he goes, Good, good. They're boss, them, mate. You know, to some of the other kid. Oh, lad, doesn't he look boss? And then got to me, went, You scruffy cunt. They went out years ago. I went, You bastard. They're only fucking 15 quid in gang skate. I went, You cunt. <laughs> got the sausage roll, kid. Deflated, mate. I thought I'd got him with him. You know what I mean? You just want to get in, don't you, lad? You know what I mean? I went, You cunt. And it just spun round and got off. Years later, <laughs> oh, I never forgot it, Bill. It drilled it all in my head. And as I got a little bit older, like 15, 16, he was still that honourable spoiled cunt, but like was fucking out on a Charlie and the fucking, you know, the Gary's and all that. I was a little bit, still a bit younger. And I used to look at him, but I had a little bit of rage in me from him, lad, because, you know, I didn't like him. Like, resentment, he'd ri resentment, yeah. He'd ridicule me. I always wanted to do him in, mate, but I never got, I was never in his company because I didn't like him. So my company didn't involve his company. So I'm on a bar and club in town and a few of the lads from our area come up and he's at the back. And I went, do you know what? He's with a few mates here from our area. There was a ten of him. I'll just let them all in. Fuck it. That was years ago. Fucking hell, that and let it go. You know what I mean? Let the cunts in. So I just let the cunt in. I seen him looking at me still. Like, I think some of them people who did that to you, the kid, still look down at you now unless you fucking put them straight. Do you know what I mean? And I seen him looking at me going in the club and I thought, I don't fucking like you. You still got that attitude there, you cunt. But you were a couple of good kids and I'll go on, I'll let it slip. So ah, two hours later, he comes up and he went, hey. He said, someone's just took one of your dorm in there, your working with, just took my Charlie off me. He said to me, though we were still at the bats, lad. You know what I mean? Though I still had the cosy on. <laughs> he went, go and get that fucking back. So I said, okay, mate. I said, do you want, 
do you want your thing back? He said, yeah. I said, come with me a minute, lads. Come on, I'll get you back. So I said, just come through this fire exit here, lad. I said, and I'll call the kid in and I'll make sure you get it back. He went, all right. I just went, fuck off, man. And it was the fucking, I just buried him, kid. And just thrown him out the back. And I, I got me revenge on him. But I waited. That's the only person I fucking can't stand. And this day, even to this day, I can't stand the cunts. Because some people, you just all that resentment for. And he was one of them. When I first opened me gym, he actually come round and tried to give me a fucking, a punch bag. I went, hello, mate, you know, looking up the stairs. I went, what do you fucking want? He went, I've got this punch bag. I went, just take your fucking punch bag off your fucking ass. I don't want your punch bag. Go on, fuck off. I can. Sometimes the only trouble with me, Bill, is if you do me a wrong, I don't forgive you. You don't let go? No. Yeah. No, I'll never let go to him. I still hate him now. No. Lad, he ridiculed me, mate. What about you? Could you let it go with kids like that? It's hard, isn't it? I, it's hard, lads. It is, mate, because I, I grew up probably similar kind of circumstances, never having nothing. Yeah. And I remember, I've shared it before, I got a pair of Reebok Royal, and, and I was the same. Yeah. I showed them to the neighbours. It was made up, because we never had nothing. Yeah. I was the oldest, again, out of yeah. six. There was no one handing anything down to us. Yeah. You know, so I did struggle. And Yeah, I used to go to school and get called a speak tramp, and it did affect yeah. me. You know, I, get, I used to get called a fucking meth, and... I never had the Ben Shamans or the Farrers. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I felt like a shit. Neither struck. did I, Bill, right? But me, my mum had like, me dead smart, she, she, lads. She, I was, she went, never went in for names. Shame, but shame. I still dead smart, lad. I didn't have a crease on my top she and might, a bit of dirt around my fucking neck, lad. My, my granddad, right, he lived with us. Yeah, my mum's dad, right, he lived with us yeah. when we were kids. And he was always an old school grafter. So the police were always knocking at the door for us. And they'd say to the house looking for him. Yeah. You know, after the time he wouldn't be there, he'd be off yeah. before they came. But I remember the police speaking to me. Mum said, you know what? You haven't got much, Pat. He said, but I'd eat my fucking dinner off your floor. Yeah. He said, it's fucking spotless. Yeah. And that's how it was. You know, we were clean. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't scruffs. Yeah. You know, we, yeah I mean, there's some kids who you were. I had a mate. And if he asked you to come in, you breathe through your fucking mouth, Bill. Be one of them, when yeah. And you, you're like, you're gasping for breath. You know what I mean? But, uh, lad, he'd never bring me in his house because you know why? He'd been in ours, and ours was immaculate, mate. And every sc scruffy cunt, he'd let go in his house. And sometimes I'd knock round for him as a kid and go, you're, you're coming out? And he'd all hang out of the window because he was a scruffy twat. Right, and he'd go in. Now, I was staying in, you know, about six kids in the house. So we would let in all yeah. like mates, and he wouldn't let me come in. And the only reason he wouldn't let me come in, because they fucking stunk a cat piss, lad, the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Because uh, we, we we could both identify with like uh, like similar stuff growing up. I had th th this kid, right, Darren, and I used to fucking hate going to school. Yeah. Right. We used to have these truffle coats on. Yeah. With these big like uh, ivory fucking buttons. You know yeah. what I mean? I remember them lads. And yeah. everyone, right, who, who never had any dog, right, yeah. went to these like local fucking yeah. council places yeah. where they they gave yeah, you, she, yeah, they gave you a grant. A grant for, and so you yeah, you yeah. stood out, you, you were separate. Yeah. But in the end, though, if you remember, Bill, I don't know, you're about two years old. I mean, in the end, they let you spend that grant. Yeah, and yeah, it was, on the, it was on the back. You, you yeah. started getting a little bit of a, yeah. a like a check thing, yeah. really. Yeah, but I used to go to, I used to hate it, lad, and I used to Could chase only go me. that late. It's called laser now, it's yeah, called yeah. something else then. And so everyone knew you had the edgy gear on, yeah. And I used to get like chased by this, this one particular kid all the time, and I was and then. Um, it was like a couple of years later, I started with that skinny little knobbly knees, yeah. loads of freckles, shocker ginger hair, you know what I mean? Just that, that skinny. Yeah, and, I was, and I felt dead uh, fucking different. And yeah. Quite vulnerable, you know what I mean? That's yeah. how I was growing yeah. up. Just one of those kids. And I joined the boxing club, I got weights off my ma for one Christmas, and I started lifting weights, I started joining um, this club and going regular. And I remember this kid, a couple of years later, he had a few mates around him and he's... Um, and he's giving it the large one outside. This little fair, it was a little fair. Remember yeah. the little fairs years yeah, ago? Yeah, that used to come down. You throw the yeah. fucking... Like, I remember standing at this fucking coconut thing and, 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 and trying to fucking be like one of those yanks throwing a big yeah. man, American fucking speedball at this coconut shy and it never went off and just getting buzzed off by this little yeah. fair. And he come right over to me and he went, um, started to just fucking give me loads. And I thought, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm sick of tired of this, you know. When you get like that yeah, rage that from the rage, years, right, the rage, yeah, yeah. and I thought, I'm sick and tired of this. And he come at me, and I remember all I knew was just put my hands up, bam, bam. I made it just hit him. But and he, he went. Do you and know that what, though, lad? He's probably another what we were talking about there. Like them fellas 
even them kids who have reputations that they were dead hard and he'd never had a fight. If you remember, Billy, I remember kids who smoked. And the first ever time I went to senior school, he was all kids outside the fucking school. You remember that your first day? It's like fucking... I've never been to jail because I can imagine it's like jail. And me and my mate went up to fucking Campion and Grady. And I, the first morning we walked in and by like the boiler room, it was all kids smoking ciggies. One blew it through his nose, you know, like... And then another one went, went pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> blew down and I went, fucking hell, mate. Only two minutes in the school, you know what I mean? Thought there's some right hard cases in here. And then another kid come up to me and he went, he was from our juniors and he was like, no, oh, two years old. And he went, did you have flushed down a bug yet? And I went, no. And he went, be prepared, mate. You know, like that. And he walked away. And was like, I was like, there was like 16 year olds in on I don't know how old, year 11. No fucking seven stones, something wet. And it's like, big kid. And this kid was playing footy. He had no top on. And he had an eerie chest. So he must have been in sixth form or something. He had no September. It was still warm. He had no top on. It was, you know. And I went, lad, look at the teachers, mate. They fucking have a game of footy with you. Look at that teacher. He's getting <laughs> rass fucking. Lad, because like, they could have been 17. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I was like, fucking hell. And we all get to put in assembly. And me and my mates are standing there. And I'm looking at him thinking, Hope we're in the same form class here, mate. And I'm looking at this kid just for because I thought like if you had freck gingers, Billy, you were angry people, mate. Yeah, gingers yeah. were angry kids, mate. And kids with freckles were angry kids because they'd always had a bit of stick. Yeah. So they were always angry, weren't they? And I'm looking at this kid in assembly and I went, lad. I said, look at that cut there, mate. He was cut plastered with freckles, redhead. And I went, he looks hard as fuck. I said, I hope I'm not in his form class, mate. And my <laughs> mate went to me, so do I. Next minute, Smith! <laughs> and next minute, he shouted his name. I looked at me, mate, though. I was getting put in a cell with him. I went, <laughs> <laughs> throw me in his form. He turned out to be the biggest fag you'd ever meet in your fucking life, lad, you know what I mean? But it's everything goes back to, like, kids and false reputations. If you smoked us when I was a kid, you were dead hard. I know. I had a mate who smoked when he was eight. And everyone just go, he's fucking hard, him, lad. And we used to go to the shop and we'd buy him ciggies and we'd just roar. Billy, we were about 10, and we'd be going on the bus and he'd be on the fucking bus, the back of the bus with a ciggy, like at eight. Horrible when you think, right? Like, he could blow it through his nose and everything. And I'd just go, oh, mate, he's got... do you want to go? Nah, fucking stinks. I never, ever smoked, Billy. I go, nah, fucking stinks. But I thought to anyone who smoked and that, Fucking hell, Bill, they were, they, were, they were tough stuff, weren't they? Do you know yeah. what I mean? And that's where a lot of people got I into think, peer yeah, pressure. Yeah, I think it's a lot of like our, um, our belief system. Yeah. Which quite... Um, but some adults still fucking do that now. Yeah. You know, they'll go around saying, oh, do you know, blah, blah, he's mad. And as Joe said the other week, he's mad. I'm fucking mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? As a, as it's, you know, it, it's, see, see when like, it's a coping mechanism, because I used to say, people used to say, he's fucking mad. And I burned him, lad. He's yeah. And I used to love it because yeah. it, you know what, right? It wasn't that I was mad or around yeah. burns. It was, it just kept me safe. Yeah, it kept it kept, safe, kept yeah. you away. So yeah. you know when people are on the doors back in the day and they're all bigging themselves up, yeah. and, and they're bigging the mates up and all that. It's their insecurities. Of course, it is. It, it is. Was, what, lads, it is. Yeah. And that's just because it's it's all based but on I never fear. ever done that to people. Do you know what I mean? I never went. See him, well, people lad. must have said that about you as well, though, Darren. Oh, no. Well, Darren, that see, he's a... He... See him, lad. He can do this, he can do that. And I'd, I would never say it about someone unless I taught it, mate, and I'd seen it. So I thought everybody was like me, and I used to think, fucking hell, mate, is he, yeah? Until yeah. I got to work with a few of these people, and I went, you're a fucking shit. It was like, one night we turned up, and this fella's on the front door, and me and me mates, we were just fucking... We always had a laugh, worked with him for years. We were always a little bit late and we turns up, just three of us on this one door, a bar in town. Yeah. We turns up and there's this fucking big fella and he's stretching his leg. He's got the leather gloves on though. We always thought, oh, if you wear leather gloves, you're a fucking bellend. And he's <laughs> stretching his leg on the, the top of the door, right? And then he's like that, lad, look. And he's like, and he's standing there and my mate went, who's he, lad? And I went, I don't know. And we walked over and he went, all right, I'm working with you tonight. And I was at dorm at the time, which means fuck all, lad. And he went, I went, yeah. And he went, yeah, him. what's the policy here? 
if it goes off, lads, because I can't help it, lads. I just steam into people. I went, do us a favour, mate, go upstairs. Go upstairs, lads. And he went, all right, lads, yeah. All right, well, what shall I do? Then I went, the buzzer will go and we'll come up. That was it, lads. Phones our boss. I said, do us a favour, lads. This cunt's a fucking bellend. Get rid of him or we're leaving. Fuck off, he was gone the next day. I couldn't work with fellas like that, Bill, and he was a lot of them about. Do you know what? Even, like, used to stand there back in the 90s and early 2000s, and they'd be nuggets with leaded, glove, with, with, um, leaded gloves on, and you'd just go, he's a bell-ending, mate. Look at him standing there with fuck. You know, with the leaded, <laughs> oh, fucking leg at you. They were always blitz, always blitz. And as I say, when I first started... I thought no one was a blade. It didn't it took me a while to um, find out that there were some absolute tools working, mate. Mm. Absolute tools. Imagine it. Imagine it. As you get, I think the older you get and the more wise you become, the more yeah. aware yeah. of where what it, what it really is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is a lot of people chatting shite. Shite. And I've always I always say this, mate. We're like we're only here for a few short decades, mate. We're blessed. Yeah. Just like live, enjoy it. Know what I mean? Don't yeah. try and be someone you're not. Yeah. Be yourself. Right. I've just been looking at my phone there and I was looking at um, a few of the stories that we spoke about. And yeah. I remember like, you know, the one where, you know, you you started trying to sell a few ecstasy tablets back in the <laughs> day. Now, <laughs> tell us that <laughs> one, Sally, that one It's just it. a quick one and we'll finish one. there, but like Oh, well, we won't finish on that one because we're gonna finish on the cool and Luke okay, one. Because it's so Easter. Um, okay, we'll give the Easter egg one. That's okay, <laughs> mate. So um I must have been built. The worst drug dealer ever, right? Yeah. Because fucking hell, I was partial to them, you know what I mean? And my mate said to me, Lad, do you want it? We were about 16. He said, Do you want to get some echoes? I said, Yeah. He said, And um, so it's sort of it, one of the doormen who were getting them off that we can go in and graft there. We just give them a little drop seed at the end of every night. So I said, well, what, are, what are we getting? He went, Speckle dubs, lad, speckle dubs. He said, We can pay him on strap. He said, and uh, we'll start grafting in Blah Blah Club, which was one of the busiest clubs. So I said, okay. So when we goes to get the garries off the fellas and all the... Uh, and he, oh, and he went, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll pay you, pay you a bit next week, week to week after you went sound. But look, I'm warning you now, right? He didn't say it all, but he said, I'm warning you now, right? Don't go feeding them to the ducks. So I said, feeding them to the ducks? What do you mean? He went... Giving them to the birds for fuck all that, <laughs> you know, like that. Don't be feeding the ducks, lad. Just make sure that you fucking give them out and they give you the dough back. Well, lad, we were in Sefton Park, <laughs> me and me, mate, lads, <laughs> weren't we? Two ugly cunts, lads. Every bird that come up, hiya, babe. You got a tablet there? It's supposed to be a cockle, Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a great use, too, aren't you? only two kids and all that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off, yeah. Thanks, babe. Fuck off, Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Next minute, kid, he mate went, didn't pay us there, lad. You know what I mean? I'll oh, fuck it, just have one yourself, mate. Like that, sweating our tits off. Next minute, she's bringing all beards over, they're bringing all beards. We just had millions of beards. We were just feeding the ducks, lad, me and him. Lad, we ended up in death for 1,200 quid, mate, in fucking a couple of weeks. We were the worst drug dealers we ever met, mate. We just took, we didn't even fucking earn any profit. We just took them ourselves and gave them away for free. So I knew that game wasn't for me and just started working and that bit. I was fucking useless. But when we go back to like it being Easter and that. Because it's Easter, yeah, we'll finish off on the because Easter. Because it's Easter. So remember every year, your ma years ago used to go lame. What Easter eggs do you want? And when I got to about 12, I was a greedy bastard, Bill. Right? And she went to him, what Easter eggs do you want? I said, I don't know, I might get a Yorkie. And it was a Yorkie, like she got them little Yorkies, always thinking, get a Yorkie one, you get all them little ones inside. So she went, I'm going to Macro now, are you come with us? So I said, all right, pick your own Easter egg. So he goes to Macro, and we're walking around Macro, and I seen the other case of fucking cream eggs, lad, right? <laughs> 48 cream eggs, and they were, they were something like £4.90 back then for a fucking. So I had a bluey to spend, she told mm -hmm. me. So I went, yeah, can I have um, the cream eggs instead of an Easter egg? My man goes, go ahead, you get the cream eggs. Gets the cream eggs. So I'm sitting there, and back then, they had them little shit computers called Spectrums. Didn't they? I'm in the room. Fucking on a Spectrum, the cream eggs are there. I was a greedy cunt, though, Billy. And I was just getting the cream eggs, kid, and I was just popping them. 
Dan in your tea. <laughs> Don't want them. <laughs> Dan, do you want a bit of toast before you go to bed? I'm all right. Stop, lad. I have 48 cream eggs in the space, say, about 4 o'clock till about 10 o'clock at night. Billy, I was sucking the cream out of them. <laughs> I was fucking breaking them apart. No all different ways of eating them, lad. But I just necked the 48 and I got in bed like Augustus Galoop out of the house. I was sitting there getting wet. We all like that. Sitting there, lad, on the 48 cream eggs. And I went, Sick, you know what I mean? But lads, all he was, I can come in and went, Give us a cream egg, you know, like that. And I went, Oh god. She went, If you went, Mom, he said 48 cream eggs. I went, Fuck off, you're not getting one. They're all gone. Anyway, all he was was all bits of tin foil all around the fucking computer. Fucking lying there like Augustus. I do need one of them fucking tubes to suck me up, lad. Little fat cunt. Next morning, my ma goes, Darren, get up. It's half eight. I was always late for school, bastard to get out of bed. I went, It's all right. So you remember you'd come down in your bills and my mother'd have me like my uniform all lined and because she was spotless, lad, put out on the chair, you know what I mean, for me yeah. to put on. You sitting there, do you want a piece of toast? No. It's fucking <laughs> No. Do you want a cup of tea? No. Kill the James in your mouth, what you drinking? No, don't worry. <laughs> sitting there like that, lads. Didn't have my watch then. It was a cup of tea, man. <laughs> Kills all the James now. No, go on, on. Sitting there, don't <laughs> Come on, get to rest. And I stood up, Bill. <laughs> and I just went, fuck off. And I had a fit, lad. And I'm on the fucking floor like that. And I just go, Mom, Mom, Mom. <laughs> me ma comes in. Me ma's screaming. Lad, I was just wobbling me head. I had some kind of yoga fit, right? Lad, oh, lad, lad. <laughs> Picks me up. Puts me on the couch, lad. She's going, what's to do with you, lad? You know, it's like a scene out of Rocky, lad. What's the scene? <laughs> what's, what's the score with you, lad? You know, all right, what have you been on drugs? I went, no, no. Oh, I'll have to phone the fucking doctor. And then doctors would come out, wouldn't he, right away? Yeah. She's on the blower to the doctor. Doctor gets down here, she's sobbing. He's had a fit, I think he's an epileptic, he's fucking foaming at the mouth and all that. Doctor comes fucking, so before the doctor got there, my granddad, he just retired from work and he was in old school. So she phones me granddad up and she went, hey dad, you better get down here. He's had a fucking fit. And I was always at half face to me ma. So my granddad come down, thought it as a fit and it's like kicking off, and let it fuck out of me on the couch. <laughs> dad, dad, he's fucking leathering me, I'm like, God, Bill. I uh, fucked on this sugar overdose or what I've had. And she went, no, no, dad, he has, I mean a fit, he's had a fit. Oh, son, I'm sorry, next minute the doctor come in and he's like, fucking hell, mate. So he gets me fucking, what's he had to eat? <laughs> he done me sugar levels or something like that. I, he went, what's he had to eat, me man? I went, he's had a couple of Easter eggs, like a couple of cream eggs, but that's all. He never had, he never had his tea last night, lad. <laughs> What is he, doctor? Is he an epileptic? You know, my heart said dramatic. Oh, lad, fucking hell. I, uh, he went, yeah, uh, how many did you eat? I went, 48. <laughs> he went, he's had a fucking shock. <laughs> I mean, glucose levels was through the roof. And I don't know how, but I fucking collapsed. But for years, this is why I didn't get an education as well, lad. For years, I hated school. I loved the kids in school, but I hated the authority, right? And I go to me ma, I go, right, come on, get up, lad. Get up and I come downstairs and I go, oh, oh, me ma, go stay off, lad, stay off, stay off, lad. And that was it. I was fucked. That's why I've got no education, lad. I'll blame them 48 green fucking heads for that kid. It's nice. And with that, mate, all right, lad. Nice Call one. it a day. Nice one. I haven't both of all fuck out of here. Be like, you know what people will be saying? Oh, like the first Rocky was sound set. It's like Polo Creed in the first Rocky. You come out and you went, fucking hell, sound him. By Rocky Four, lad, you were there. You were fucking made up when the Russian killed him. I'm not coming back for another number four, lad. I'm on my ass. Here. And there's loads of stories that we haven't even talked about. I've still got loads of stories. Believe Thanks. it or not. Happy care. Easter. Sarah.